Hey guys, welcome back to the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. I hope you're doing great today. Hey, I have got a bunch of stuff going on and it's all behind the scenes work, but it's all mining farm work. And I thought I would just take you guys along for the ride today and show you a few things that we're working on behind the scenes. A lot of this is stuff to support the farm, but it's also to help support some future videos that we've got coming. So I thought I would just kind of take you along for the ride today. Now recently you guys may have seen the video where we got this new Asus ROG Strix gaming PC in place and we're using that for editing, gaming, mining, a little bit of everything right there. And what that allowed us to do was remove the old production machine that we had there that we were using again for a little bit of everything. We were doing Chia mining on there, solo Chia mining and several other things. So Putting in this new PC has allowed us to do a couple of things. It allowed us, first of all, to free up some graphics cards. And if you've watched the channel before, you know what I have always done is try to take my higher power cards that I don't need and put them into the farm and let them earn some revenue. And that being said, this 1660 has been here actually in the studio and I've been using it for production and it's probably like one of the smallest cards, lowest power cards you would use for something like that, but it, it got along just fine. Well, now that we've got the new 3070 in here, I'm able to remove this from a secondary PC that I'm not gonna use for editing and producing anything anymore. Uh, so that being said, I got a few of these GT710s and dropped it into that machine. And that's actually this machine down here on the floor. So I just got the 710 put in there and so today, one of the things we need to do is take this out to our Skywalker rig and get this put in place. And if you followed the farm, that Skywalker rig has been a collection of 16 series cards that have been pushed from other projects, similarly to what we have here today. And it's actually become, you know, a decently small sized rig. So we're gonna get that put in here shortly. We've already got the 710 put in this new machine over here. Now, something else we've got going on behind the scenes that I've got to get set up, I don't know if I'll get to it in this video, is Chia pooling is now available. And I've got some buddies that are already on top of it, and I haven't had the time after getting back from vacation, yada, 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 a whole bunch of other stuff. So I've got a couple 12 terabyte drives here, which are pretty cool, actually. They, they are these Western Digital Blacks uh, that are pretty cool looking that are designed for the Xbox. Uh, but we're going to put these in place on the PC and we've got a 10 terabyte drive here that we're going to put in place and then we've got a few other drives that we're going to add as well. We're going to get those going. That may be a future video upcoming. The other thing we need to do when we go out into the mining shed here in just a second when we go to put this card into Skywalker is we've been going off and on with this rig. Now it was powered off while we were gone for a week on vacation just because I didn't want to trust all the fluid here in the studio, just in case anything burst or something weird happened. So we've been doing different tests on and off with this thing. It's, it's mining away right now with the two GPUs. But what we had up next for our next mineral oil video is we've got to break down that 470 AMD rig that's out in the shed right now and bring the other four cards in here, remove the fans and get them ready to go into the mineral oil rig right here. And that'll probably be part three to that video. And I've got some NFTs I need to open up uh, today. So maybe I'll take you along for that ride, but let's get out to the shed. All right, guys, so here we are out in the farm again today, and it is a scorcher. It's a scorcher outside. It's 90 plus degrees. I think the weather app said it feels like it's about 96 right now. And you can see at the exhaust right here, we're looking at about 102 degrees Fahrenheit. This one at about 101. So everything is still up and running except for one rig which is vader right here and it's designed to cut off anytime one of these hits 103 so it's going to be the first rig to power down it's powered down today that being said i think i'm going to add a quick task to my maintenance it's been on the to-do list to take this single 3000 series card this is the solo test rig but you can see it's got all the fans here i think what i'm going to do is try to go ahead and get this rig pull the usb out of there move it up to here I might be an SSD. Pull the SSD, move it to here, and get all of these cards out and drop them in up here to help with 
cooling those 5700s because their memory gets really, really hot. And then next is the Skywalker rig we talked about down here. So we've got our 16 series cards in there. We've got some supers, it looks like. Uh, maybe a, yeah, a 1660 Ti over there. And then we're gonna add this 1660 to it. And that'll be a pretty decent little four card 16 series rig. And then lastly, I've gotta bring this rig down and get these 470s taken out of here and taken inside. So we'll bring these three in and I'll think about the 570s. And that's our RevTech board, which ultimately that immersed mineral oil rig is gonna be running off this RevTech board. All right, executive decision. I know I've only got four cards total in here, but I decided to put this up on the second row just to help space it out. And with this AAA wave frame, I've got the space, so why not use it, right? Man, that Dark Trooper mining rig is still one of my favorites to this date. One of my favorites that I built. It's got the new AAA wave dark frame on there. All 1660 Supers just hashing away. Hynix memory. This thing's ROI'd now a couple times. Such a fun rig. When I'm out here working, it's just cool to look at. I know it's hashing away. Okay guys, so we got Vader done. I had to make an executive decision because of the heat out here. You can see it's picking up 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I did is instead of moving all of these GPUs, hard drive, risers, everything up to here and redoing the cables, just for time's sake, I pulled the back row of uh, fans off here. These are the higher CFM AAA wave fans. And I just moved them down here to the front for now and um, definitely pulling a lot more heat off so definitely good sign and that's one of those things i'm just going to have to monitor and see how vader does especially on the hotter days and this is honestly guys this is as hot as the shed ever gets right here and really if it gets any hotter everything just starts auto shutting down on its own and everything will just end up completely off if it were to get any hotter than this and then the other thing is, let me show you what's going on in Hive right here. We have got Skywalker up. There we go, so you can see we've got four GPUs in there. So I've got a little work to do optimizing that uh, for overclocks, but I'm not gonna do it while I'm out here in the heat. All right, up next is the 470 AMD rig. Gotta get these taken down. And one of the things I'm thinking about here is what risers I'm gonna use because these little uh, padding pieces that are on the bottom right here, I'm not gonna put those down into the mineral oil. So I'm gonna have to see if I'm gonna use older ones for that, grab some power cables, and we'll be ready to go. All right, so we're back. We've got those three 470s taken out. We've got them ready for that immersion mining rig part three video coming. And then while I was looking around in here, I was thinking about this little rod that I've got here that came off of my AAA wave tower and that tower is supported so well I just I, I don't think I need it so what I think I'm gonna do is in that video I'm gonna use this initially to stabilize all of the cards that I submerge down into the mineral oil and that way I can keep them locked in place with one another but yeah these are ready to get into the studio okay guys just hopping over to Hive OS to do a little bit of maintenance while the heat is out and to optimize the overclocks on that Skywalker rig. And I thought I would point out while I'm in here, I'm grabbing some of these rigs. They've been up for a while. Look at this, booted a month ago. And while it's extra hot outside, I figured this is a good time to go ahead and run a bunch of updates. And because it's daytime, I've got a little while to keep an eye on them and see how they do before bedtime. I don't, as a policy, as a rule, <laughs> I don't do any updates before bedtime because something can go wrong and the last thing you want is to have rigs down while you're sleeping or have to troubleshoot in the middle of the night. It's just a pain. Learn that over the years, don't do it. So I'm doing the updates here during the middle of the day, but also while it's extremely hot outside. That way the rigs are gonna power down, even those that have been on for quite a while here. Good time to go ahead and update the rig and reboot it. That way we can let the shed cool down a little bit, let the rigs cool down a little bit, and then everything will run a little bit happier. And within about an hour or so, we're gonna hit that time of day where everything starts to cool off and we will be back up and running with no problems. All right, guys, there we go. So here is the Skywalker rig. I just rebooted it and I found some decent settings for now for this 1660 and we are at 26.93 mega hash right here on restart. So we're at zero on the core clock, 
1750 on the memory and 80 on the power limit and what I've found is if I push this to 1800 or above which is about 900 on the memory in Windows then this thing starts to get crashy the 1660 not the TI's not the supers but the 1660 itself so I dropped it down a little bit below that and looking good so far now we can just let this guy purr along and earn some crypto all right guys, so while I'm in here in Hive, you guys are probably aware I have worked with the Hive OS team for a couple of years now. And I made the switch over to Hive OS, really never looked back, just for the user interface, the simplicity of managing the entire farm. So I've kept in touch with them and they have been talking to me about a new feature that's coming out that they're pretty excited about called ASIC Hub. So this is gonna be pretty similar to what you're used to seeing with the GPU Hub. But if you've got some ASICs there in your home farm, or maybe you've got a larger farm, <laughs> this is a pretty important update for you. And the idea is you can now update all of these ASICs into your Hive OS interface, which is a really great way to manage the farm. And it looks like it's a pretty easy lift to get it done. You're just going to install the ASIC hub on Linux or Windows. You're going to register the ASIC hub, and then you are going to add your ASIC devices. Now, let me say real quick before we talk about this any further from what I understand from their team, this launches July 20th or on or about shortly thereafter. So if you've got some ASICs, you want to get them up and running in Hive, take a look at ASIC hub. So the basics of it is if you wanted to install on Windows, for example, you're going to download the Windows 10 ASIC hub installation and you are going to open up localhost 8800 port 8800 in the browser to get to the asic hub web interface to register the asic hub you're going to grab your farm hash drop it in into the gui and you are going to be off and running once your hub is registered successfully you're going to add devices and i'll leave a link to this they have a list of asics that you can use to add to the asic hub and then you're going to use the web UI to actually add your ASICs. Now you can do this by IP address, by subnet, or by IP range. You can also import from a CSV. I imagine this is pretty good for those of you that have really large farms. And then here you can see the walkthrough of adding a new device. All of your devices are going to show up once you've got the farm hash set in your ASIC hub software, which is just going to run as a service in the background of your Windows machine or your Linux machine. Now there are a few things to note that I was paying attention to as I was reading through this. If all of your ASICs have static IP addresses, they recommend disabling ARP scanner to reduce the load on your router. And I definitely recommend this a lot of the home routers that do uh, parent monitoring, for example, of families use these ARP scanners and they're very effective. They work really, really well for intercepting DNS requests. And in those instances, it just starts to bog down the network a little bit. So the Circle by Disney product, which I'm a big fan of, by the way, uses these ARP scanners. Uh, so if you've got your ASICs on static IP, be sure to disable ARP scanner. After that, you should be up and running, guys. If you've got any questions, be sure to check the ASIC hub knowledge base. I'll leave a link to that in the show notes. Again, I don't have any ASICs on the network right now, but I really love Hive OS, and these guys over there are really excited about launching this new feature. So if you do have some ASICs, please go check it out. All right, I wanted to take a break for a minute and take a look at some of the NFTs that I picked up recently and maybe even open a pack up. So right now I am on the wax.io website and this is not sponsored. This isn't an ad or anything like that. This was a place that a buddy of mine and I just started taking a look at what they had and you can see through the D apps on the dashboard they have MLB cards, Godzilla cards, Street Fighter 5 cards, Robotech, and really a pretty good variety of other stuff that is available. And I am one of those people, if you've talked to me before, you've gotten this sense that I've really been on the fence with NFTs. And to be completely honest, I'm still trying to wrap my brain around the long-term value. But on a smaller scale, just to get familiar with them, you know, Wax io was a pretty simple way gosh this does sound like a commercial it was a pretty simple way for me to come in and just kind of get my feet wet with them and one of the nice things for me was that i didn't have to waste 
quote unquote waste any of my crypto because I'm trying to hodl a bunch of that. Uh, I was able to put in a credit card if I wanted to uh, once I created my Wax web wallet and just buy some of these cards right here. So I ended up picking up some Street Fighter cards and some Robotech cards. And Robotech, I had picked those up maybe over a couple months ago. And I think I'll open one of those packs here today just to uh, have a little bit of fun and show you what I got. I've never done that before. And then if you're interested in collectibles and this kind of stuff, keep an eye out because MLB, uh, Street Fighter, there's occasionally some free stuff they give away. They actually gave away some free Street Fighter cards or stickers or something like that. So if I come over and just take a look at the NFTs that I currently have, you can see I got a couple packs of Robotech and then one pack of the Street Fighter cards. And I have a standard pack right here, which I believe is just, yeah, 10 digital cards. And then I've got this Mecha pack, which is 60 cards right here. And you can see my pack numbers, 62, 25 out of 10,000. So I think what I want to do is open this up with you guys. And like I said, this is the first time, so I don't know how much is going to go into this. And I'm going to go, it looks like open pack. Okay, I'm going to open the Mecha pack. It is a smart contract to open one of these packs. Wow. I just want to open a pack. Error. Build CPU time is greater than the maximum billable CPU time for the transaction. Okay, I clicked around a little bit and waited. And just randomly, I actually wasn't recording. I had to hit the record button real fast. Uh, it decided to open. So that was a little frustrating, but man... Now that this is open, this is pretty, pretty cool. So uh, a little blast from the past. I actually used to play the Robotech role-playing game back when I was in high school with some buddies of mine. And man, this just brings back some memories right here. So let's just take a quick look at everything we got. Oh, there we go. Look at that. The number one, VF1A. That is pretty darn cool right there. Now check this out. I can craft cards open more or view in my wallet. I'll have to play around with this to learn a little bit more. It's funny, I remember this Destroyed Phalanx back in the role-playing days. My buddies would take this because these little arm pods were just loaded, loaded with heavy-duty missiles. So if we got into a fight, they could take out just about anything we ran up against. Same with this Destroyed Monster right here. This thing, these cannons were a beast. So check this out. I was just doing some reading on these cards, and it looks like you can actually build cards or combine them together to create new cards. So right here, the Street Fighter cards explained a buyer of the Street Fighter build card pack, open the pack, and then combine two matching build cards. So some of the cards that I opened when I looked at them in my wallet, they had build on them right beside where it says rarity. In this example, it says base. But for me, mine say build, and that allows you to reveal a new card. The build cards are burned in the process, increasing the scarcity and value of the standalone build cards. Okay, so I just hit the button to open in my web wallet, and when I did that, it revealed this, the number out of the complete number printed for the series. And this was the lowest that I got right here, this number 12 SLV 111 Daedalus, which was 278 out of 25,000, which I guess is pretty cool. Looks pretty neat. And then I also got one not too far from that. Right here, I got a number 314 out of 25,000. So this is the number 17 light missile battle pod. Pretty cool stuff. Okay guys, so let me just say this real quick. I have started opening these and with these recipes for combining, I've started playing with this a little bit and I need to do a separate video on this because I have no experience with this. It's the first time I've done it. It's really fun and it definitely seems like a rabbit hole. So please do comment below if you've played around with this stuff, if you've started collecting. It looks fun, definitely could get expensive and become a real rabbit hole, but it is a little bit fun. So I think I'm gonna do a separate video on this. 
and explore how far I can take these recipes and combining. All right, so I'm going to spend some time with these. I'm going to learn a little bit more about what I've got. If you have collected any NFTs or know anything about this stuff, rarity or anything like that, do comment down below. This is just fun stuff. thought I'd take a little break and let you see what I was doing. So I think I'll actually wrap there today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy stuff like this, sort of uh, daily maintenance behind the scenes, what's going on while we prep for other videos. And we will see you in the next one. Thanks again, guys. Take care.